Hola, bienvenidos. Yes, this is your one-on-one -on -one Spanish class. Are you ready? Okay, great. So, um, we are centrally located and there are some other classes going on nearby and a lot of traffic and things like that, so I hope it's not too distracting and that you are still able to stay focused today. It'll be okay? Great, thank you. Thank you for your understanding. So I wanted to start by asking if you have any experience studying Spanish or speaking in Spanish, traveling in a Spanish-speaking place, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Great, yes. Yes. And um, where was that? Okay, great. Great. So today I'm going to be focusing on the Spanish that is spoken here in Argentina. Um, it's a bit different from Spanish in Spain or Mexico or Costa Rica or anywhere else you might have been. And um, I think you'll like it. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, perfect. So, um... Oh yeah, that's a great question. It is raining today. Um, yeah, so so it's chuvia. Mm -hmm. Ay chuvia está lloviendo. Yes. Yeah, so we can actually start with that, which is um, that the double L and the Y here, which are normally pronounced Y in other countries, here they're pronounced sh. Mm -hmm. So, um, one second. Yes, so the double L and the Y. So for Shuvia, which we spell like this, you'll say it Shuvia. Yes, instead of Yuvia. So another good thing that you can practice um, to that end is Sho Me Shamo, right? So I am called exactly. My name is, right? So in most Spanish-speaking places, this would be yo me llamo, the Y and the double L, but here it's yo me llamo, mm -hmm. y chuvia, yes. Yeah, it's been raining quite a lot lately, so I hope um, that doesn't affect your stay too much. You like rain? Good, yeah, me too, actually. Um, okay, so as we go through the class, I'll just take notes and then um, I'll put them to the side so that way after the class, if you want, you can take them with you and um, study. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to move on to vos. Do you know vos? Yes, so it is the second person pronoun. Um, in other places, I believe there's a formal and informal way to address another person, but um, here everything's informal, yes, and we use vos, mm -hmm. so instead of tu, it's vos, great, perfect, so, v o s, yes, so um, there's a different way to conjugate vos, different than tu. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, it's actually pretty easy. Yes, I promise. So there are some exceptions, as with anything, when you're studying a language, right? Mm -hmm. But um, in general, it's very easy, and so we'll start with the present tense. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's an AR verb that you know? Yeah, a blar. Great. Mm-hmm. And what is a ER verb, you know? Comer. You're choosing great verbs. And then also, do you know an IR verb? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Dormir. So we have hablar, to speak, comer, to eat, and dormir, to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So um, normally you would conjugate these in a different way, but here for the 
Present tense, typically all you have to do is take the R from the infinitive, just remove it, replace it with an S, and then put the emphasis on the last syllable. Mm -hmm. So, to give you an example, with hablar, it would be a blas. Mm -hmm. So, took away the R, put an S instead, yes, and then the emphasis on the end. Mm -hmm. Hablas. Great, yes. So, comer, mm -hmm. the same way. Right, yes, perfect. Comes, right? Yes, good, good. And then, um, so this is actually a great verb that you picked because normally it's stem changing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, you don't need to worry about the stem changing. Yeah, it's amazing, right? I, I told you it was easy. Uh -huh. So, kind of count, counterintuitive, but yeah, good. So, dormis. Mm -hmm. Excuse my handwriting. So, hablas, so hablar, hablas, comer, comes, dormir, dormis. Yes, easy, right? Good. So now for um, past tense with an AR verb. Um, here, let me just write these out again really quick. These verbs that you gave me. Great. So, hablar, comer, dormir. Um, for past tense, with an AR verb, you're going to add aste. A, S, T, E. Mm -hmm. So, a, blaste. Yes, a, blaste. A, blaste. Yeah, great. Okay, and then for the ER and IR verbs, you are going to put I-S-T-E, iste, or E-S-T-E. Yes, good. So, go, miste, o, do, miste. Yes, so, hablar, hablaste, comer, comiste, dormir, dormiste. So that's the past tense. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, as I was saying, there's exceptions to every rule, and um, you will find exceptions here as well. But in general, this is how it's done, and it will get you pretty far. Yeah, I know, it's great. And so the last conjugation we're going to practice is um, the second person with vos, the imperative. Mm -hmm. So that's like when you command someone to do something. So, um, speak up, go to sleep, um, call me, stuff, stuff like that. Okay, so with the same verbs, yeah, mm -hmm. you chose very good verbs, so we'll just continue with those. Good. So here, um, it's sort of similar to the present tense, we're just going to take off the R of the infinitive and put the emphasis on the end, so you don't need to add anything like the S from up here. Mm -hmm. So, hablar, yeah, very good, hablar, comer, come, mm -hmm. and dormir, dormi, yes, hablar, habla, comer, come, dormir, dormi, yes, so that's the imperative, the present tense, the past tense, and the imperative for both. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, great. Any questions? None so far. Okay, perfect. Well, you're doing so well. Um, I'll just rip the sheet for you too and put it over here. Great. Oh, you do have a question. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've noticed the produce here has some different names than maybe what you're used to. Yeah, um, two examples I can think of are frutilla for strawberry, mm -hmm. and palta, palta for avocado. Yeah, so frutilla, f-e-r-u-t-i-l-l-a, so it's that j sound, right? 
Great, perfect. And then panta, P A L T A. Mm hmm, for avocado. Yeah, I like both of those too. So you can um, keep that in mind if you decide to buy some produce or if you're looking on menus and things like that. Yeah, great. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some phrases. So the first one is, um, you know, it's typical to ask uh, how someone is. And you can say here, como estas, and no one will think it's weird. But you can also say, como andas. Mm -hmm. So the infinitive of this verb, andar, is to walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially asking, how do you walk? But it means, how are you? And so kind of a cheeky answer is con dos piernas, with two legs, if you want. Um, but if not, you can just respond how you would normally respond. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Um, you can also ask, ¿Qué onda? Onda is like a, a wave or a vibe. Mm -hmm. So, ¿Qué onda is, uh, how's it going, what's up? Mm -hmm. Yes, very useful. And then, um, thinking about onda here, people also often ask how to say um, like superlatives and positive comments, you know, like great or excellent or sounds good. Um, and so I'll just write a few here for you that you can throw out whenever you want. Great, so the first is buena onda. It's like good vibes, sort of, but you can use it as an adjective. Mm -hmm. so you can be like, ella es muy buena onda, o parece buena onda. Mm -hmm. Perfect, buena onda, yes, good. And then another one is piola. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a third is copado. Mm -hmm. So you can use this to say like, wow, well, um, él parece muy copado, o es muy piola, es buena onda. Mm -hmm. Good, yes, I think you'll find them useful. Good, okay, so I will put this with the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'll teach you a few last um, phrases or words that you can use that are, are from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one is mala leche. Mm -hmm, like this. So literally, bad milk. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you say tener mala leche, it means um, to have bad luck. But if you say ser mala leche, somebody is mala leche, it means they're, they're a person with bad intentions um, or maybe someone who, who doesn't like when others succeed. Yeah, so like if you see someone, I don't know, keying a car or something, for example, it's mala leche, of course. Mm -hmm. They're mala leche. Yes. So it's kind of like the opposite of buena onda if you will. Mm -hmm. Then another phrase that you might find useful is estar al horno, which means to be in the oven. And you can add actually con papas, so like to be in the oven with um, french fries, yeah, or with potatoes. Mm -hmm. So it just means to be in a tough situation. So if you didn't study, which I'm sure never happens to you, or um, or um, if someone's mad at you and you have to go talk to them because you know you did something wrong, uh, you, you're in the oven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so estar al horno. Yes, good. Another one is mandar fruta, which means to what it sounds like to send fruit. Mm -hmm. So that means to talk nonsense. I'm not sure if it actually means this, but I kind of imagine somebody um, like selling fruit or like sending a fruit basket for some reason, but it means to talk nonsense. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Good. And then ponerse las pilas. Uh -huh. Ponerse las pilas. Good. So to put in um, batteries. And so unlike in English where you say like, I'm going to go recharge my batteries and that means that you're going to go rest and maybe take a siesta basically. Ponerse, ponerse las pilas, it means the opposite. It means like put in new batteries, exchange your batteries so that we can go out so that you have energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then something more tranqui. The last one I'll teach you is tomatelo con soda. Yes, like this. Tomatelo con soda. Mm -hmm. And so this one means um, literally take it with soda or drink it with soda. Tomar is used here to mean to drink. So tomar un trago to have a cocktail, um, tomar agua, to drink water. Mm -hmm. So, to drink something with soda is to take it easy. Yes, to take it easy. Uh -huh. Good, perfect, you said it perfect. Um, and so, I kind of think of it like if you're having a cocktail, trago, if you put more soda in it, it dilutes it, so it's less strong, you're taking it easy. Mm -hmm, it's that kind of idea. And then um, you'll see here that um, this is the same conjugation we practice at the beginning of the class. For vos, right? So it's the imperative. Take it easy. Toma. Yes. So you're taking off the R from tomar, adding nothing because it's imperative, and putting the emphasis on the end. Perfect. Yeah, you pick up on things so quickly. Perfect. Any questions at all? No? Okay, well, I will put this with the rest of your papers. Mm -hmm. um, and I know maybe you're a little old for this, but I personally really like stickers, so I thought I would offer one to you. They're upside down. Yeah, so we have um, oranges, naranja, right? Una estrella, una manzana. Un hongo, frutillas, helado, una cucharita. You want one? An orange? Yeah. I will um, put it on your paper. Yes. So these are your papers um, that you that you can use to practice. There's your little orange. <laughs> um, the jo sound, some useful words, how to ask people how they are, how to say things are good, and how to conjugate vos. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. You speak so well already. Um, here are these for you. Yeah. And um, thank you so much for staying focused in this class. Uh, you had some great questions, and you were such a good student. Um, and if you like, just let me know if you'd like to set up another class, and we can continue at your convenience. Yes, great. Okay, nos vemos. Ciao.